How's it going everybody, Lancer here, and today I have another VR walkthrough slash guide for Please Don't Touch Anything. This took me a while to complete, but I was able to complete it and bunch it up into a video, which has all 30 endings. So I am going to help you guys in completing all 30 endings, so at least you can share it with others as well. This first step okay, is not as hard as you think. A lot of people have probably gotten this, so there's no worries for anybody not to get this. All you have to do is don't press the button. So you can look around, you can touch other objects if needed, but don't push the button. If you push the button, the achievement fails, and you will just have to press the reset button and not press anything. Once you get it, you can move on to the next step. In this next step, this one's another simple one, if achieved. All you have to do is constantly press the button. Every time you press the button, it opens up another mechanism or drawer for you to reveal. So take note that pushing the button does activate most of the stuff. Now when you push about 20, everything shuts down, which activates the next achievement. For this achievement to unlock, all you have to do is push the button once, which will then bring up a switch. In bringing up the switch, once you flick it once, everything goes flashing red, and then all you do is push the red button in order for it to count down, which will then explode the city and unlock the achievement. Now it's time to get a little bit technical. If you push the button twice, it will open up a Roman numeral panel of 1, 2, and 3. If you look over to the instructions and kind of tilt your head a little bit, you kind of notice that the Roman numerals do show from bottom to top. So if you put in the sequence 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, it will open up another panel, which will move the lever to the left and open up a number pad. Now, if you glance where the whiteboard is and then tap on the blue folder, you will get the numbers 8267. So then if you go back to the number pad, type in that number, you will open up a grid-like thing and a, another number key of 1, 2, 3, 4. Right now we're going to focus on the grid and we're going to kind of make a star on the grid but in doing that it brings up a satanic environment in the room which may make you feel uneasy especially when you have things whispering in your ears which then unlocks this achievement this next one is pretty simple and it requires the hammer. So what we're going to do is we're going to push the button until the hammer reveals. Once the hammer reveals, we'll take it out, aim it at the screen, and click on it. And clicking on it, it breaks the screen, but also reveals a question mark right behind it. So, as we push it, It shows the Illuminati, but for some strange reason they're showing symbols as well, so make note of that. In this next sequence, we're going to be a little observant around us. So what we're going to do is, we're going to push the buttons until the Roman numerals comes out. Remember the sequence. 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, because you will be using it throughout this whole session. We're going to move the lever to the left again, which opens up the number pad. And before using the number pad, we're going to look at the machine to the right of us. The number is 8008. 
is on there. So we are going to use that on the number pad. Which then opens up another panel, and then you press the left arrow. And in doing that, it takes us back in time. Now we're going to do the same procedure again like we did before by opening up the number pad, putting in the sequence 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, moving the lever to the left, and again we are still using the same numbers 8008. Putting that in the number pad would open up the panel again, but instead of pushing the left, we're going to push the right, which takes us to the future. For this one, we're going to reveal the screwdriver. Now in revealing the screwdriver, we are going to open up this little panel here that needs to be unscrewed, and it will show you four colors, green, red, yellow, and blue. Now if we look on the instructions in row two, uh, you notice the spelling G-R-Y-B. So we're going to put that sequence green, red, yellow, blue, which will then unlock the next achievement. Okay, so for this one, we are going to bring back the Roman numeral, put in the 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, and then we are going to move the lever to the left. Now we have our number pad open, and the number that we're going to use, if you guys remember, 8, 2, 6, 7. So. Now we're going to focus on these four numbers here, one, two, three, four. Now if we look back at the instruction board, you notice the numbers is one, two, four, four. So we're going to type that in to get the next achievement. Okay, so now we're going to go and focus back on the instruction board again, so let's go through the sequence of the Roman numerals. Now instead of using the lever to the left, we're going to actually move it to the right, which reveals a 0, 1, and a UV light. We're not going to worry about the UV light right now, so we're going to go back on the instruction board and focus on the red and blue dots. So right now we're going to use the red as 0 and the blue as 1 to give us another sequence code. So typing in 0010110, we'll open up the next achievement. This next one we're going to open up the Roman numerals again and instead of using the lever we're going to actually use the printer on the left side of us. Now as it prints it's going to print out the word correct which is upside down with a bunch of arrows. Now if you flip the paper over which you cannot pick up the paper uh, the arrows are kind of focusing on these green panels which then gives you the sequence. And summons a UFO. Ouch. Now 
we're gonna go focus back on the instruction book. But if you guys noticed that there was a red book, do not tamper with it just yet. You'll find out what it is later on. So as we go through the Roman numerals, pushing the lever to the left, opening up the number pad with the 8267, we are back with the 1234 numbers. Now I'm gonna show up the screenshot here. And if anybody has seen this, this is the sequence that you have to use it on. So the number sequence is 3121, which we are gonna put that in the four digit number. Which opens up a little keyboard on the left side of the panel. And if you listen carefully, there's a melody that you have to probably go in sync with, which you kind of do. Now, you don't have to memorize it. You can kind of look back at the screen and be able to do it. And if you get it wrong, it'll erase. If you get it right, uh, then you can kind of keep the sequence going. So from there, it'll open up the achievement once you unlock it. In this next sequence, we're going to actually take the time to observe the room in another perspective using the UV light. So we're going to use the Roman numeral code, we're going to move the lever to the right in order to get the black light to show. Once you pick it up, everything around you is going to show up compared to what you would normally show. So I'm not going to really say too much except one sequence that we're going to be using next. On the whiteboard, there is a number that says 011235813. We're going to be using that in the next sequence. But also, we're going to look around and give you guys an idea. I'm not going to really say much, but I will show you the screenshots of what it's going to be used for. So kind of pay attention and maybe you might get a head start before this video ends. So after looking around the room, we're going to continue and unlock the next achievement. We're going to use the Roman numeral code 312213. We're going to move the lever to the far left, which opens up the number pad. Now we're going to open up the screw and there's a small hatch under the screen, which then you push the red button and will flip another panel over a screen panel. So with this, you would have to use the number that we saw on the whiteboard which is 011235813, which was a uh, sequence to Leonardo. All right, in this next one, we're going to use the green, four, the four green squares again uh, that was up in that panel. So uh, in order to do that, we need to use the Roman numeral sequence. And once that happens, it'll open up and you'll see it. So printing this out again, you will see the arrows uh, and the word correct that is upside down. Instead of just doing it right side up, we're going to do it as we see it. So if you go on the right side of it, up, down, down, up, it will open up another panel. And it's basically a counter, but there's an engraving of 276 on there. So literally, you would have to press the white button. You can actually hold it too, so it's not like you have to keep tapping it, so that's a good thing. And make it go to 276. Once you make it to 276, Hit the little red button and it'll give you the next achievement.
In this next one, we're going to play a little mini game. And for that to happen, we have to do the sequence. So we're going to start by pushing the button, doing the Roman numeral passcode, moving the lever to the left, and opening up the number pad, which we're going to do the 8008. Now, if you notice, there's a floppy drive. Well, in order to get it, we have to find out where the floppy disk is. So we're going to pull up the hammer. Now, this snapshot, if you guys saw this, was a hint that this drawer is capable of opening with a key. Well, the only key I have is this hammer. So we're going to pry it open with the hammer, and there's the floppy disk. And the name of the game is called City Boom. So all we do is insert City Boom into the drive and play the game. Now, this is just a simple mini game, and in this mini game, all you do is bomb the city until it reaches flat on the ground. And this next one is another mini game. And the mini game is similar to Whack a Mole. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get the hammer out. And we're gonna use the hammer on the button itself. Now, once you do that, you'll hear a alert. But the more you keep hitting the button with the hammer, a bloody beast fetus comes out and, well, you're hitting blood sacks in order to actually eliminate it. Again, equivalent to Wacom. So, as you see, uh, there is a blood trail from the baby hitting towards the reset button. If it hits the reset button, it resets the whole board and then you have to do it all over again. So, in order for you to complete it, hit all the sacks, then the baby, rinse and repeat, and you unlock the achievement. In this one, this one was actually a little tricky, but it was kind of nice how they did it. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of open a lot of things up. Uh, we're going to have the screwdriver and the hammer for this. Now, we're going to get the screwdriver and we're going to unhinge the instruction board. In doing that reveals a clock mechanism with a couple of numbers on the side. So we're going to take out the hammer and we're going to hit the clock. And in doing that, puts a green light indicator to show that you have to put the hands on the very top. So you can actually manually move the clock itself in order for you to actually print out a template or a Morse code of some sort. So looking at this, uh, reading it from bottom to top, one one three two one one now i'm telling you guys this now it's random so as much as you do this it will come out differently so don't do it exactly as it's written on this video In this next one, we are definitely looking at the counter again. So we're going to press the button, Roman numeral code, and going back to the printer just to say that we're actually going to be using the code that brings out the counter, which is the up, down, down, up on the right side of the four green buttons. So once it's released, I'm going to show you something. 
and it's the number six. For some strange reason, it's red. Out of all the numbers, the number six. Well, that says something because likely it's engraved on the panel itself. So, you know what that means. We have to get the triple six on this counter. Now, once you make it to triple six, a symbol grid will show. Now, if you guys were paying attention throughout the other endings, they actually gave away what symbols need to be lit up. So in order for you to do this, we'll have to subtract all the symbols that was not shown in those two snapshots to reveal the next achievement. For this, I had to get help, but now that I had the help and figured out what to do, I'm going to help you guys now. So what we're going to do is push the button, do the Roman numeral code of 312213, move the lever to the left, opening up the number pad, which we're going to use the sequence 8267. From there, it opens up this grid. So right now, I'm going to print this out again just to signify that we're going to be focusing on the four green buttons on the top left. And we're going to do the up, down, down, up. Which then opens back up the counter. But we're not going to focus on the counter, we're going to focus on this D4. So also I'm going to take out the screw and unhinge the instruction board. If you look on the top right, you have numbers and letters all there, and we have B4, D7, D1, and putting that with D4. So we're going to put that on the grid here, reading it from left to right as A through G, and then up through down through 1 through 7. So we're going to start with D1, and then work our way with the other numbers that we got, and it creates a diamond on this grid. Now, as it opens, it opens up a diamond. And now the question is, what are you gonna do with this diamond? Well, with that said, we're gonna use the screw and we're gonna unhinge this panel here, which reveals the colors. Now, if you guys remember back at City Boom, the ending actually gave a hint. Well, if you do the sequence right, it actually opens up another panel with its wings, but there's more to it. If we look at the UV light, there was actually a number in that symbol, 8020, which basically was the answer to open up the wings. Then it reveals another button, but then you can't push the button. So you use the diamond and you put it in that little slot there, which unlocks the button and all you do is push it and then you get your ending. This sequence is called the Stanley Parable, and what you do is you repeat the shutdown phase where you have to shut down everything by pressing the button rapidly. From there, I'll let it take over. But then, a very peculiar thing happened. It was at this point that the computer screen showed a new message, awaiting input. Well, this is certainly different, thought Stanley. And that's when the extra buttons began to appear. And then more buttons. And then more buttons. And 
and then even more buttons. Until at last there were so many buttons to press that Stanley wasn't sure he could press them all. And then he did. Finally, we're going to mess with the red book on that table. We've been avoiding it, but now we're going to use it. So, if you look to where the printer is, there's a stamp. Once you pick it up, it actually opens the book, which V for Vendetta is on the screen. So, you have the choice of approving or denying. Now, this is a game called papers please and with papers please all you kind of do is vindict a couple of people from one side of the city to the next either approving them to pass or approving or denying them to not pass so approving would not do anything but denying brings up the next ending by the way if the developers watch this papers please would be the best VR experience and I'm only saying it because of what you would have to do on that game Think about it. Just think about it. Now, I don't know if anybody's been paying attention throughout this whole video, but there's a small little arrow next to that button. It's been there every time, but once you push it, it disappears. So. We're actually going to follow this arrow here, which is going to lead us to a path by kind of tapping on the panel and seeing where the arrow goes. If you kind of hit where the arrow is directing to, that's the only time the next arrow will show up and for you to kind of follow it until we make it to like a end point. Now once we make it to the end point, it opens up a grid and this is the game of lights, if, you, if anybody ever played lights, where you have to kind of make the whole panel fill up with lights. Now, it's up to you, but you can slow down this video so you can see the sequence that I do in order to actually get it right on the first shot. And then it will open up your ending. Now understand that everything around you has an answer, and for you to find that answer, you gotta figure out where to put it. So, pushing the buttons, Roman numeral sequence, moving the lever to the left, and then we're gonna have our number pad open. So, and also I am going to take out the screw for this one as well because we will be needing it to open up the colors buttons. You know it. So, we're gonna look at the calendar on the left side where the printer and the clock is, and we're gonna kind of give an idea of what we're gonna be looking at. So, uh, with that said, we have the planet Earth and we have 2001 on April. So, April of 2001. So, we're gonna put 2011 on this. Now with that, it actually opens up a type of Rubik's Cube kind of thing. I'm, I'm not saying Rubik's Cube, but like a decoder. There, there you go, a decoder. And so we look at the calendar and you notice it's planet Earth. So that was kind of obvious to the point where, okay, I need to spell planet or Earth on this decoder. Now, 
when you open this up, it opens up a key. But this screenshot here shows you what you need to do next. I didn't show it in the uh, other clips when we were doing the UV look, but if you press the yellow button four times, it opens up a, uh, a key slot. And use the key with the key slot, and it'll open up your next ending. Okay, we're almost done here. So right now we are going to push the button. We're going to use the Roman Roman numeral code, and we're going to move the lever to the right. Now we're going to go back to the zeros and ones. But before we use that, let's go back to the UV light. Now there was probably something I did show in the UV clip, but right now we're going to focus on this that says Morse, and it's pointing up. And right now that little notepad had D N I. And then the Morse was pointing up from there and then down to the zero once. So what we're going to do for this one is take out the hammer. Because I don't know Morse code by heart. Now, if you pull this hammer and we open up the drawer with it. And under the phone is a cheat sheet of a... Uh, of Morse code so it's not like you actually have to memorize it or look it up it's right there in front of you so all you have to do is make sure you get the Morse code for D N and I and just put it using the zero as the dots and the one as the dash Now, before I go to the next one, we're actually going to be seeing five new endings for this version. The developer made a PC version of this, which had 25 endings. So right here, you'll be seeing all five new endings and how to get them. The screenshot that I'm going to show you is actually one of the hints for one of the new endings. And it's pretty simple on how to get this one. First of all, we need the hammer. Once you get the hammer, break the clock. Now all you have to do is move all the hands to the six. But every time you do it, you hear a little, it's like a gong noise. And from there, we summon somebody. get some deep breathing from behind you, which you have to look back, sorry to say. But if you guys actually recognize that person, it was the person that was on the screen from when you summoned the first time. Creepy, right? Alright, so for this next ending, we're going to kind of set things up first and then I'll explain along the way as we set up. So first we're going to get the screwdriver. Now, once we get the screwdriver, we're going to open up the hinge under the screen. And remember, when you push the red button, it will flip the panel screen to use for the number pad. So that means we need the number pad. So let's put into sequence 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3. Move the lever to the left, which will reveal the number pad. Now, before we even use the number pad, we're going to look behind us because behind us, we had a lot. And this screenshot shows you that if you use the UV light, we have numbers. So we're going to put in the number sequence 5537000078, which will then unlock the locker. Once the locker's unlocked, you see a gas mask in there. So all you have to do is grab the gas mask and push the red button. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's to the point that we almost beaten everything with a hammer. But not everything we haven't beaten yet. So we're going to get out the hammer from the panel by pushing the button, I think, 15 or 18 times. Something like that. So we got the hammer. So we use the hammer on the screen, and we use the hammer on the button. Now we're going to use the hammer on the printer. Which then gives us our next ending. We're almost at a close with this video, so I think it's time to clean up around the office. I've noticed we've been having these paper balls all over the place, so it's better that we clean up after ourselves. So if you look around the office and you see a paper ball, pick it up and put it in the trash. Collect them all and eventually you'll be able to get your next ending. Thanks for picking up all that trash. The station director would fire me on the spot if she saw what a mess this place was. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. This ending took me three hours to complete, but I was happy once I figured it out. So here's how to do it. What we're gonna do right now first is get the hammer out and open up the drawer with the hammer because we're gonna actually use the telephone for this. Now, the cool thing is when you pick up the phone, you actually get a tone dial. Now, if we press zero, you get the operator. Operator, do you need an exit? Well, who doesn't need an exit? Well, that didn't work. So if I pick it up again, let's call 911. What is your emergency? Well, that doesn't make sense to hang up on me when I'm about to say it. But anyway, I know a certain number. 8675309. I think everybody knows that from the song, right? She never did return my call. Anyway, hanging up the phone. So after playing with the phone a lot, I look over at the whiteboard and I discover that there's a telephone number on there. 311-399-2364. So I decided to pick it up and dial in that number. But it was a fax tone, which I didn't understand why, so that probably meant something, but I didn't think of it at first, so I hung up the phone. So the next thing I did is pick up the screw and unhinged the machine to reveal the colors, but then also I used the screw to unhinge the big machine, which revealed hamsters. So that's how the machine ran. Anyway, if you notice, the lights freezes on particular colors. Red, yellow, yellow, blue. So once I saw that, I put that into the color panel here, which opened up another compartment. Now this is an old-fashioned fax machine type deal, which you have to actually put the phone onto it and dial in the same number that we saw on the whiteboard. So that's what we're going to do for this next ending. Now this is the game of tic-tac-toe. Now if you pick zero 
uh, the computer plays itself. If you pick player one, you play with the computer, and I'm telling you, you'll never win. So pick zero, and you'll get your next ending. Stay here for a minute. What? Did you ask what that panel's for? Ah, don't bother. It's just a coffee machine. Strange looking, right? I don't know where it came from. It just appeared here one day. Sometimes it shows ads on the screen. You can order some coffee while I'm gone. Just push the red button. So. Once you push the red button, it actually was a coffee machine this whole time. Now, I am going to say that this game gets frustrating at times because you're trying to figure out the answer. And then there are times where you have to look it up on the internet or actually ask source. So, I mean, there are times where I had to do it, but then there were times where I actually got each one by myself, which was a relief of, as completing this game. Uh, this game was great and I did enjoy every moment of it and usually I know a lot of people would enjoy this game too. So I'm hoping the developers actually do create papers please. If they create papers please I'll buy that in a heartbeat. I don't mind sitting there looking at people and doing paperwork for them. I mean come on it's a cool game. So all in all I hope this guide actually helped you guys and uh, if you guys have any other friends that actually has this game, definitely share it with them and let them know that there is an actual guide now on YouTube. So if you enjoy this content, give it a like, share it with others, and click the subscribe button if you want to see more.